and that kind of turns into like the story. And so part of this and part of understanding time and part of going through this whole process literally is you drop your story. Because guess what? The past doesn't matter. Past doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter. When you walk into this building right here and you stop at that door and you bow, what that's symbolic of is there is no time. You notice there's no clock in this room? That's very deliberate. Uh -uh. You walk in here, there's no past, there's no future in this room. If you want to deal with past and future, that's fine. Do it out there. And you have to be practical, obviously. We have to be practical. And even this, you got to show up at 7.30 you know, for this class. But Master Campbell, you said it started in the now. Okay, fine. Just be on time, please. I mean, so, so we have to, obviously there's like a practicality of it. But just but understanding that, okay, past and future, no, it just exists in your head. That's it. It's a blip of energy. And so if something in the past that happened to you is not serving you, drop it. Another way of looking at it, I think I said this last week, the past is good for education and entertainment. And if you use the past for anything other than education or entertainment, it's a misuse of the past. Education to understand cause and effect. Okay, I did this, I got this result. My thinking was this, I got this result. And just kind of be able to objectively studying it. Objectively, let's say, like look at past and future, cause and effect, causality, or, or the other word for that is karma. Of just of cause and effect, both good and bad. Okay, I did this and I got the. Okay, so now what do I? How do I want to do? Or how do I want to think? How do I want to build this? Or entertainment, because we all have a lot of things in the past that happened that are very funny, even if the time maybe they didn't seem too funny, but you can always laugh at something, and that's always and that's always a good thing. So it's the it's the it's that understanding and coming to that understanding and ultimately because what does a teacher do well a teacher puts students into this moment a stu a teacher takes students out of the past and future out of their head out of the incessant stream of thinking and puts them into this moment and ultimately creates space because then you create space in between your thoughts you know space in between your ears well then that's when you have the powerful transformational process so a lot of times it's not so much even like when you're when you're teaching it's like when students have a have an experience or the light bulb goes off they have an aha moment or just even they they leave here and they just feel good and they're not even sure why a lot of times it's not so much giving more information I mean this class there's a lot of information because you, you do want to understand the mechanics but sometimes that realization comes from no thought or creating space and it might be something you said to create that space, but really that's where it is because ultimately like healing comes from space. And so always make sure that you have space. You know, space in everything that you do, space in your thoughts. What's the difference between, you know, reacting and responding? I'm into semantics here, but when you react, there's no space. When you respond, ah, then there's space. So you create a little bit of space between action and reaction. And that actually comes back to ultimately understanding time and what time is, what time is not, and other ways to look at time.